Joe's time for another ride in the snow. Taking a look at the GI Joe Polar Battle Bear, courtesy of the latest Patreon polls vote. Yo, Joe! Hmm, I seem to take more GI Joe toys out in the elements than any other toy line. GI Joe gave me a real appreciation for going outside and letting my imagination run wild, literally. Probably a big reason why I love the snow so much to this day as well. And why I decided to grab a whole bunch of extra snow ops footage this past winter that I could revisit throughout the year. Starting this video off is the original version of the Polar Battle Bear that was released in 1983. This year diversified from the standard olive drab uniforms, vehicles and gear, and branched out to some arctic ops with Snow Job, which I did an earlier Toys Gone Wild feature on, and the Polar Battle Bear Ski-Mobile. For this review though, Iceberg will be doing the steering, since Snowjob is notorious for wrecking these things. Ah, uh, would I do a thing like that? Yes, you would, and you have. I guess with how cold it gets in the Arctic though, a Joe's gotta do what a Joe's gotta do to keep warm. And the Polar Battle Bear was a regular source of bonfires in the show. This bear came armed to the teeth and ready to take a bite out of some snow serpents with a pair of side rockets and twin front mounted laser cannons that could be aimed left or right. You'd think lasers would be a great weapon to use in the Arctic, but they tended to overload because of the cold. System malfunction! The laser cannons on overload! It's gonna blow! Like most Joe vehicles, there was something for the driver to actually hang on to, and some stickers showing various gauges and meters. Another standard feature was the removable engine cover, revealing the engine underneath, and a trailer hitch on the back to haul weaponry or cargo. The treads don't actually work. Like the Snowcat, it's hard plastic with small wheels within, and there's skis on the front. The important thing is that it's able to zip across snow and ice, and this design allows it to do that just fine. And the skis can turn left and right to allow for some maneuverability. In the show, the Polar Battle Bear had two versions. A one-seater, like the toy, as well as a two-seater. The toy can actually hold three figures, thanks to the foot peg and grip on either side. Well, I guess the one on the show could hold three also, but one of the passengers had to be a ghost. What was that? So many Joe toys only have a peg to attach the figure, and I like that the Polar Battle Bear has the handle for them to hold on to as well. It looks better, and is also more secure when you're speeding along the tundras. In 2009, the Polar Battle Bear was reissued in the Past and Present set from G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra as the Rockslide ATAV. In the case of the Polar Battle Bear, you can't beat the classic, so minimal changes were made for this reissue. It's pretty much the exact same mold. They didn't even add extra detail to the gauges, like they usually did with the anniversary updates. In a case of having the best of both worlds, some retooling has been done inside to allow the modern figures to fit better, but the vintage sized pegs have remained so that your old Joes can still hitch a ride on the side. Since I'm a big fan of reissues and being able to have the old toys from my childhood in minty fresh condition, I was very happy to pick up this reissue, especially since the original mold and colors have remained intact. Playing with Joes in the snow was some of the most fun I had as a kid, and since I never had a polar battle bear growing up, it feels like a little bit of time travel to be able to head out to a hill of snow and scoot along the icy plains in search of cobra. Just remember, there's no stopping on a dime in the Arctic. Feel free to share the video on your various social media platforms, leave a Snow Joe memory below, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Yo Snow!